I'm going to start. My name is Cindy Kelly of the Atomic Heritage Foundation, and it is Tuesday, August 13, 2013. And the, uh, with me, I have Denise Kiernan. Uh, Denise, would you like to say and spell your name? Denise Kiernan, D-E-N-I-S-E, K-I-E-R-N-A-N. And I am here with Cindy Kelly and Cecilia Klemski. Okay, so Cecilia, uh, we've given you a hint, we've called you Cecilia. Can you please tell us your full name and spell it? Well, my full name is Cecilia Dorothy Klemski, C-E-C-I-L-I-A, that's what I was baptized. Dorothy's my middle name, and K-L-E-M-S-K-I, that's a Polish name, and that's my last name. And then what, what was your maiden name? Can you say your maiden oh, name? Oh, yes. My name, maiden name was Cecilia Szapka, Polish. It was S-Z-A-P-K-A. -A. My dad came from Poland, and my mother came from Brazil. And they met, you know, when he came over, he was 17 years old. And they met, and they married, and then they lived in Pennsylvania. And there were six of us children. The oldest one is a priest. He was a priest. He's dead now. And, but there were six of us children. And we were all raised in the Catholic schools. And a little town, coal mining town, called Shenandoah Coal Mining Town. My dad was a coal miner. And, uh, you know, we went to the Catholic school. We went to high school but my mother couldn't afford to send me to college. So then I took a civil service test and I ended up in Washington without a college education. And then from Washington, they sent me to New York. And from New York, I came to Oak Ridge. Okay, all right, we're gonna back up just a little bit. Um, could you please, uh, first, what year were you born? What I was, was born in 1919. May 17th, 1919, I'm 84, 94 years old, I'll soon be 95, and um, I was stayed in Pennsylvania until I was 17 years old, and then that's when I left, and I haven't been back there, so. So uh, you left at age 17 to mm -hmm. go to New York City? No, first I went to Washington. Oh, to Washington. Okay, tell I, us that story. I, well, when I got there, of course, it was right after high school. My mother couldn't afford to send me out of college. That's when, you know, I got my job in Washington. And uh, I met some people from different parts of the, of, of the United States. We formed some very close relationships. We lived in a boarding house together. And I was there for, I guess, about four or five years, my mother said, you've got to come home. So, of course, I had listening to my mother. I went home. I was there two weeks, and I couldn't stand it because there was nothing to do. You know, after Washington, there was nothing to do in Pennsylvania. So uh, I, I asked for a transfer, and two weeks later, I was in, in New York. So, so that, you know, that's the way my all my upbringing came about. What were the offices like in Washington, D.C.? Oh, they were, they were all wonderful. They were all wonderful. They really were. Everybody I worked for, Volk, and then, of course, met General Groves, and uh, met quite a few important people, you know. So, so for whom did you work in New York? Who are you working for in New York? Well, I was working with with the, it was the Manhattan District, really, you know. But, uh, oh, I worked for Temps there and uh, met quite a few, you know, quite a few uh, uh, people there. I've kind of forgotten their names, you know. Oh, Those cool. in Washington kind of stick with me, but uh, I was only there about nine months. And then they said we're moving, and when they said we're moving, I didn't know whether I should go, but I decided 
I wanted to go, and so I came to Oak Ridge. So I've been here ever since. Who was your boss in New York? Colonel Vanden Folk? Yeah, well, Colonel, yeah, he was up. He was in in New York too. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then he came to Oak Ridge too. You know. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, when when he was oh when when he was when we were it, up in New York, he asked me to go to dinner with him a couple of times at his home. And so of course I did. And so I got to know him pretty well, you know. And uh, he was a great guy too. And uh, you know, I don't know what else I could tell you about him. Except he was a great guy. He really was. All the people I worked for were wonderful. And, and, and where was the office? It was on Fifth Avenue. I think it was Fifth Avenue that it was on. It was a big building. And there were quite a few officers there, you know, and, and it, 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 was, it was an exciting life. It really was for a little coal mining girl, you know. So, how did you get to work every day? I took, took the train. I, I walked to the train, and I picked up the train and took me to New York, and then I walked from the train to the station and then back again. And we took the train from New Jersey to, you know, to 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 uh, New York. So, how many other young women did you meet? Working. Oh, I met a lot of a lot of women. A lot of when I went to to uh, Washington, I met a lot of people from Pennsylvania, all over. You know, who came from just like I did. You know, and uh, then of course when I went to New York, I met a lot of people there too. But see, I haven't kept in touch with them because you you move away, and you know that and, and that that association is gone. So, was it exciting to be in New York City? Oh yes, mm -hmm. yeah. A couple of times we'd go down to downtown, you know, to to well, we even went to the to the um, some district there, and and we weren't supposed to be going there, you know. But some of the girls were going. They said, "Come on!" So why we went there? That was the only time I went. I didn't go after that. Hmm. So, should I ask what was going on there? <laughs> yeah, well, it just it was just a little frightening. It really was for a little coal mining girl, you know. So, but it it was it was exciting. I'm glad I went, you know. So, so you um, did you go to the Empire State Building? Oh yes, yeah. Walked up to the to the top of it. I walked up to the top of that building. I could not believe it, but I did. <clears throat> of course, I was young then, you know. Now, yes, you it all like those that? stairs, all those stairs, I do. I remember that very well. I didn't walk down. I took the elevator down, but I walked up those stairs. Of course, I was young then, see. I was 23, 24, you know, 25 maybe. And now, you know, I'm almost getting, getting to be 95, so. So what year were you in New York? Well, I went to New York, let's see. Uh, I graduated in 37. I went to Washington. I was in Washington about three years. And then that, that so, so it was probably about 19, I graduated in 37, so 40, 40, 41, you know. It was about about that time. Then I came to Oak Ridge. Well, I came to Oak Ridge, though. No, that's, that's not right, because I came to Oak Ridge in 43. There are a couple more things about New York. If you could think about um, what, what was you know, some of the um, most impressive buildings you saw or... Some... Well, I, w the, I went to Radio City. <clears throat> that, to me, was exciting. And of course, we we visit a lot of the big buildings, you know. Uh, I can't even remember what they were, but when I first got there, you know, that was one of the things we did. You know, 
try, tried to get to see all the big buildings that we could and going to the Empire State Building, that was exciting. And uh, that, that's about all I can remember about that, you know. That was 70 years ago, so. What about the uh, statue in the harbor? Did you see the Statue of Liberty? Oh, yes, yes, uh-huh, yes. And, and it was, there was something wrong with the statue at one point, you know. And, uh, but we saw the Statue of Liberty, yeah, crossing, cross, you know, cross, go, going into New York. I think uh, they didn't like the statue all during the war. Is that what was wrong with it? The torch was not lit? Well, I can't remember that, yeah. but I, I remember at one point, uh, you, you know, we could see the statue, and then another point we couldn't. But I don't know. I can't remember that. I'm getting old. You're doing <laughs> awfully well. <laughs> you are. Okay. Um, maybe we should talk about uh, how you happened to. Oh, you should tell me this first. Can you remember uh, your job? What was your job in New York? In New York, well, I worked for for Mr. Temps up there in New York, and, and I was really just a secretary. You know, I took dictation and uh, transcribed all the notes and all, you know. I was just a secretary, really. Did when, they, they, um, they must have given you confidential information. Oh yeah, and quite a bit of confident, yes, quite a bit of it. In fact, I think later on, <clears throat> I, I, someone gave me a copy of, of something that I had transcribed, and it was confidential on there, and I wasn't supposed to see it. But somebody had passed it on to me, and they weren't supposed to. And of course, they took it away from me right away. You know, but the minute they saw it, I had it. So, were so, you aware that there were spies in New York? Oh yes. Tell yeah. us about it. They, they, in fact, they warned us about that. They warned us about that. But see, I didn't realize it at the time. You know, you don't, when you're young, you don't think of, of things like that, you know. To me, it was exciting being there, and I loved every part of it, and I loved every part of my career, really, you know. Can you tell us, um, just because people don't hear my question, can you say, the, what did they warn you about? Did they warn you about spies? Can you say that? No, no, they never did. Mm -mm. They, except that you had to be very careful who you talked, who you talked to, or what you said. Don't say anything about where you're working. You know, they warned us about things like that. <clears throat> but they never told us anything about spies being around, you know? Why did you have to be careful about what you were saying? I don't know. They, they, that was the first thing they told us when we hired in. You know, what you hear here, you know, stays here. You don't, you don't, you don't broadcast it. In other words, were there people listening for you to make a mistake or see if you talked about things you weren't supposed to? Well, I don't. I don't really know. You know, because I worked in an office and. You know, I did, all the people I worked with I thought were wonderful, you know. I didn't think of any of them as being spies, you know. But you never know. Or that's what they warned us about. You never know who you're talking to. So. That's good. It was so, quite a career that I've had, you know, for a little coal mining girl, you know. You're doing great, Celia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So why don't you now tell us, um, how you got to Oak Ridge. So tell her about the train down to Oak Ridge. Oh, oh, I, well, that was exciting. I love that because we rode first class, had our breakfast, our meals, you know. To me, that was exciting. First time I've ever ridden first class coming to Oak Ridge. So. So you and Others who were part of the Manhattan Project office in New York were shipped. Everybody left Manhattan, or most of you? 
Well, no, just, just some of us, just some of us, because uh, I was the only one on the train, as I recall. You know, they took me to the train and put me on the train and said we were going to Knoxville. They, they, so. Knoxville was on the map. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said you're going to Knoxville. That's where we went. Uh, at, uh, when, I, when I came in, uh, that's where I landed at. At the, at the station in Knoxville. And then, of course, the government car picked me up. Okay, and can you Pick tell us up. how you felt? I mean, what was Knoxville like after New York? Well, you know, of course, New York to me was huge, you know. And Knoxville, I thought, was wonderful. But see, I haven't been to Knoxville that much, you know. It, it, that was my first first time. But when I came to Oak Ridge, that was a, that was in the, that, but that was really a, an exciting time for me. I had black suede shoes, and I stepped in the mud. Lost okay. everything was mud here, you know. Yeah. Where did you get those shoes? I Miller. I, I Miller uh, in, in Knoxville. I bought those in Knoxville. In New York before yes. you left. Yes. Uh huh. Before I left, that's right. And I paid twenty three dollars for them. I'll never forget. That's the most I ever spent on shoes. I think. At that time, you know. Well, the, the girl before me stepped out, and she stepped into the mud, you know. And I, I didn't want to ruin my shoes. I said, I'm not getting out there. But I did, you know. They made me get out there. They didn't carry me until after I stepped in the mud and carried. Then they carried me in, you know. So it it was it was just an exciting time. Well, and that was quite an awakening out yes, there in yes. New York City. A big arrival. Uh, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. From Fifth Avenue to the mud, right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So what, what was your, uh, where did you live? I lived in, in the first dorm that was built across from the cafeteria. It was dorm, W1, I think is what they called it. And I lived on the th third floor. And I got a roommate that I never had met before, and um, her name was Maybell, and she was from Wisconsin, and there I was from Pennsylvania. We didn't match at all, but we we lived together, you know, for about a year or so, and then she moved off. So uh, then after that, it wasn't long before I met my husband. We married. I married in Oak Ridge. Oh, I didn't marry in Oak Ridge. I married in New, in New Jersey, but my brother married me, and um, then then I'm still in Oak Ridge, you know, and I love Oak Ridge. I really do. Well, you went through that history very fast. <laughs> we want some of the tidbits. That was a quick seventy years. Yes, yes, yes it was. Detail. Yeah, it yeah. Was. We want to know how you fell in love. Oh, well. I was, I'll tell you, I was dating his roommate. You know, there were, there were a lot of young men here, you know, but not too many that I, I could meet. But I met this young man, his name was Lou, and uh, he said, I'm going to, to uh, uh, Knoxville, I'm going to pick up my roommate. And he said, he's, he's working in Alabama, and with the ordinance works. And I'm going to pick him up, and he's going to work in Oak Ridge. Well, the minute I met him, that was it. I told Lou, I said, I'm not dating you anymore. I like the other fellow better, you know. <laughs> and he said, because he's Polish? I said, no, I didn't even know he was Polish, you know, but he was. He happened to be Polish. But I fell in love with him, and, you know. And then Lou, met my sister, and he married her. And of course, he's gone now, too. Henry died in, in 87, and Lou died shortly after that, so. But my sister's still living. She's two years younger than I am, and she's in, in South Carolina, so. Where did they, did they meet at your wedding, or how soon did this second no, romance no, happen? No, she, I'll tell you, he, she came down to visit me after I met Henry, 
and I started dating Henry. And of course, Henry and Lou were very close friends. They were from the same town, and they were good buddies. Yeah. And um, so when when she came to visit me, I was dating Henry, and she met Lou. And several months later, they were married. So, so that's the way that came about. So. So you were married in '45 before the end of the war. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, see, my brother was a priest, and he he wanted to marry me, of course. And he said, "I'm not coming to Oak Ridge." He said, "You'll have to come home." So I got permission to go home, and he, I went to New Jersey because that's where my mother was living at that time. She, my dad left the coal mines, and he they moved to New Jersey, and and, and of course. That's that's where Father had married me, St. Stephen's Church in Patterson, in forty-five January forty-five. So, so did then he, you died, then, he um, died in eighty-seven. Yeah. So wonderful. Um, did you then move to a, a, a alphabet house, or where did you live with your oh, husband? The, the first house we had was was the door, one of the dormitories. That were, it was four fourplex dormitory. We got one of those, and it was two stories. The E unit? Are you talking about the E units? The E, yeah, E E, yeah. You know where there were four. It was on ten, off of Tennessee Avenue, and we lived on on the second second place. And we weren't there very long when I got pregnant, and then of course we got an A house up on Outer Drive, and then. When my I was expecting my second, third child, maybe I don't know, we moved to a sea house, on on um, off a of, off of the uh, oh I forgot I'm surprised but anyway and we moved to a sea house and then from the sea house then uh, then we moved we bought a, a bought a home in uh, woodland in woodland. <clears throat> On Niagara Lane, and that's where we lived until, you know, until he died. And <laughs> well, now we're we're in the mud of Oak Ridge, uh, and uh, what was your assignment? What what was your job here, starting in 1943? Were you were when you I, yeah when you when I'm, I came I'm going to backwards a little bit to when you first arrived in Oak Ridge in Oak Ridge in mm -hmm. 1943. Mm -hmm. So. What was your job? I, I still worked up at the AEC building, you know. What was the name of the building you worked in then? They called it the, oh gosh, now you're testing my memory. Did they call it the castle? Yes, yeah, uh-huh, the what castle. What did they call it? Yeah, I think it was the castle. Yeah, they called it. And I lived in the dorm, and I was could could, could walk up to the, to the building, you know. And I worked there. I worked for Mr. Smiths, and he was he was my boss at the time. And then before long, I got pregnant and I had to had to quit work. So I didn't work up there too long, and I often w wished I could have gone back to work, but I didn't. You know, I raised my children and and worked other places. You know, so. Tell Cindy about Colonel Vandenbal. Oh, he was a great guy. He really was. He was he was one one of my bosses too. <clears throat> of course, he he transferred from Washington from from anyway. He he came to Oak Ridge too, you know. And uh, his wife was wonderful. She had us up for dinner quite a few times after I came to Oak Ridge. This was when I was single. Her name was Gertie Gertie, and Colonel Vanderbuck was a great guy. He really was, and. Uh, he, they had me up for dinner quite quite often. We got to be real good friends, you know. So I made a lot of friends in Oak Ridge. I really do. What did you do for Colonel Vandenbalk? Oh, I just took dictation from him, you know, and trans transcribed some letters that he'd gotten, and you know, just 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 regular secretarial work. That's all. Did you ever fill in for his other secretary? 
Oh yeah, Sherry. Sherry, Sherry was his other secretary, and when she was gone, I would take her place when he when she was gone. You know, if she was on vacation or something. Her name was Sherry. Would you mind telling Cindy about the time when you were filling in for Sherry and Gigi needed your help? Oh, quite often, quite often he'd call me. You know, when when his secretary was gone, and he'd call me to take dictation from him and. So you know, I took dictation from him. He was a gr he was a great guy to work for. You know, that's that's about all I can remember about that now. What did he look like? Good looking guy, you know, but he was tall. I know he was tall, big built. Did he look neat and tidy? Oh yes, always, always. The general always looks neat and tidy. You know, don't you think? <laughs> what did he What did he tell you to call him? He said, call me GG, which I did. And then, of course, by the, later on, then I, I learned it was General Gross. Then I started calling him General Gross, you know. But I got to know him pretty well. How did you, how did you feel about all the pressure and stress? And how did you get the sense from him? General Groves, that he was under a lot of stress. Well, you know, that never occurred to me at that time. I don't know why. I knew he was a big shot, you know, because I had a brother who was in the, in the, two brothers in the Army, and I knew he was up there, you know. But I, I never, I never considered him, you know, that much above that I couldn't, converse with him, you know, and have a normal conversation with him, so. So he was friendly to you? To, yeah, he was. He was, he was, a, he was a, a, a kind man and a very generous man. Um, you know, he, he was just a, just a real good, I thought a real good guy, you know. Because some people you meet you don't like, but I liked him from the very beginning. In fact, I liked all the people I worked for, even Mr. Smith's. I didn't like him in the beginning, but got to like him later on. So. Um, how many days a week did you have to work? Oh, Five we, days, six days? Tell, yeah, make yeah sense. we worked Monday through, through Friday. Of course, we were off Saturday and Sunday, unless we were called in for special duty or something. And it wasn't very often that I was called in. But some people were called in for special duty, but I wasn't. But I worked Monday through, through, through Friday and uh, lived in the dormitory, uh, ate in the cafeteria, you know, just a just regular working girl till I got married, you know. So, what did you think of the food? Oh, I, I didn't think it was bad at all, you know. Even the cafeteria food wasn't bad. To me, it was different, you know. Because I was, I was born in a Polish family, and we had mostly Polish food, you know. But it was very good. It was good too, you know. But it was a different kind of food, you know. So I, that was my first exposure to other foods. What kind? You know, oh, a lot of things. Sausage. I never had sausage, you know, because my mother made her own sausage. We never bought sausage. We never bought bacon. Uh, she made all her bread. She made all the cakes. And, you know, so we didn't get any of the, of the bakery stuff that, you know, all the kids talked about that was so good, you know. And I missed that. So then when I started working, I was able to get all that. So it was, it was an exciting time to come, you know, to come to Oak Ridge, I think. So what did you wear to work every day? Just, just regular clothes, you know. I, I, I Miller shoes? No, I didn't wear, the, that was the one good pair of shoes I had. The other, others were saddle shoes, that, mostly saddle shoes, you know, because you walked up, up there to the castle on the hill and it was all mud. So you had to have something serviceable, you know. 
I never didn't wear many high heels in that day, you know, in those days. Those I. Miller shoes were my only expensive luxury that I had. It's because I was coming to, to thought I was coming to a big city, came to Oak Ridge. Were you surprised um, by Oak Ridge? Yeah, I was. When I got to Knoxville, I thought, oh, this is great, you know. But when I got to Oak Ridge, that was another story. It really was. When they took me up there to that castle on the hill, and I stepped in that mud, I thought, what God for safe place have I come to? But, you know, I, I, I've been here 70 years, so I guess I've learned to love it, you know. There was a time when we were supposed to be transferred to Richland, Washington, and then that was canceled, and I was glad because I was glad to stay in Oak Ridge. So, so how much uh, did you know about the mission of the Manhattan Project? Did you know they were working on a bomb? Yeah, we knew nothing about it when we came. We knew nothing about it, and of course, being a, from the coal mining region, you know, I knew nothing about it. We didn't even study it in, in our in our uh, uh, classes in in the high school, you know, because I, I couldn't go to college. But we didn't even hear about Oak Ridge. So when I came to Oak Ridge, it was really a a rude awakening for me. It really was. But you know, I've learned to love it because I've been here seventy years. So I think it's a great place. So how did you? Uh, first learn uh, that Oak Ridge was involved in making an atomic bomb. Well, of course, that was when, when it all came out, you know, when, when all the news came out. They, you know, we heard it on the radio and, and they talked about it. And, of course, we had celebration up in the town site, you know. That's the first we knew about it because I, I hadn't heard about it before then. You were having a little morning sickness. How were you feeling when you heard about the bomb? Where were you, at home? Oh, no, no. I, I can't remember where I was. And we could not believe, we could not believe all this that we had heard. Because it was news to us, you know. Because even though we worked for the government, we didn't know anything about it, you know. Or at least I didn't, you know. Being a coal mining girl, I guess I, I just didn't, it just didn't grasp in my memory, you know. So what was your husband's job? He was a machinist, worked for DuPont. He was, he was trans, <coughs> transferred from, um, uh, from... Maryland? Maryland. No, not Maryland. He was born, he, was, he, he lived in Maryland. He, he it was in... Uh, Alabama. Oh, we went from yeah. Maryland to yeah. Alabama yeah. to Oak Ridge. Yeah, uh huh. And and his roommate was transferred to Oak Ridge, and then we went to pick him up in Al. In that we went to the train station and picked him up. That's the first time I met my husband. Yeah. So. Which so, factory did your husband work in? It, it was du Dupont. It was for Dupont. Do you remember the name of the building? X10, X10, that's where he worked. He worked there until he retired. He had a heart attack and then he had to retire, so. So he had no more idea about what the overall project was for than you did, is that correct? No, no, because when he worked in Alabama, he knew he was coming to Oak Ridge because it was supposed to be the, the big project, you know. And so he came here, and he had no idea either, I don't think. I, I don't, I, he never, we never talked about it, really, you know. It was something you just didn't discuss, you know. Everything was secret, and you're not supposed to talk about it. So after um, the news came out, after the news came out, um, how did you feel? Oh, we were relieved that it was all behind us, you know, 
that we didn't have to worry about being secretive and because really you know at that time we were it, everything was kind of quiet you know and you couldn't talk about anything and after that you felt a little freer you know so I don't know it was just it was just a different a different life it really was so had, were your brothers then pleased that the war was over oh yeah they were all excited about him the one who was wounded and they retired him from the army he got a medical discharge you know and then of course he moved to new jersey and he ma he got married and uh they were all happy that but see my other brother was he was in the philippines at that time and we couldn't wait until he got home and once he got home then like began to get a little normal again, you know. Did he come home after the bombs were dropped and Japan surrendered or, or before? No, no, he came after that. It was after that. After, you know, after, the, it, after it was all over with, practically. And he, I can't remember what year he retired, but anyway, he, he left the army then. He, but he spent... My, my brother Clem spent about 15 years in the service, and Al only spent about six or seven, I think. And and then he came home, so. But he was the younger one, so. Did you like going to the dances? Oh, yeah. Tell, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about a dance. Oh, what yeah. What was it like? Yeah, I, at, at the tennis courts, you know. What was at, it, the tennis courts? Yeah, that's the first place that we had dances was at the tennis courts and that was exciting of course I you know we went there and you you didn't have a boyfriend you know you just danced with everybody else but it was exciting and it really was those those were the good old days when you're young you know and then later on we used to have them at the Ridge Recreation Hall so but those early days in Oak Ridge were really wonderful I really enjoy those Although I'm beginning to forget about a lot of it, you know, so. You're doing good. Oh, you're but I can remember a good part of it, though. Why don't you tell Cindy about the time your mom told you to stop writing home? Oh, <laughs> well, see, I used to write home, and I used to ask about my brothers, and uh, she said, you know, she said, I get those letters, and she said, everything is crossed out. Everything's blacked out. She said, I don't know what you're writing there, but she said, evidently they don't want you writing that. So she said, quit writing those letters to me again. And I was always inquiring about my brothers, you know, every time I'd write, because I didn't phone in those days, I wrote a letter. And, but she finally said, she wrote and said, I get those letters and they're all blacked out. Please don't write those, I can't understand them, so. But they used to black out everything I asked about my brothers. I, of course, that was in the early days, you know, when they were in their service. How did you feel when you found out about that? Oh, it, it kind of made me mad. <laughs> it really did, to think that they were getting into my personal mail, you know. But it was war, and, and we excused a lot of that, you know. But she told me, she said, don't write those letters, because she said, I'm afraid you're going to get in trouble. She was worried about me getting in trouble, I think, more than anything else, you know. Were so. you worried? No, I wasn't worried, you know, because I, I didn't know they were crossing out my letters, you know. But I was just inqu inquiring about my brothers, because, you know, I didn't, have a, I didn't phone at that time. My mother didn't have a telephone, you know, and so I wrote letters, so... She said, don't write those letters because she said they're all blacked out. Do you think they could have a place like Oak Ridge today? No, never. I don't think. Do you think they could? Oh, I want to hear what you think. I think you're more, you're more interesting than I am because you lived here when it actually existed. So. Yeah, but, but I don't, I, well, I don't know. I just hope we never have another episode like I went through, you know with the war and everything and worrying about your brothers and, you know, it's a different life now. Of course, I'm old, you know, so. What do you think is different about today? 
Well, at least I don't have to worry about war. Oh, right now I don't, you know. And if I did, there's no, none of my children are old enough to go to war. Of course, I've got two little great-grandchildren that will be up there, you know, pretty soon. So that would worry me. But all the rest of the family is, they're, they're all getting older like I am, you know, so. So it's, it's a different life, it really is. But I love Oak Ridge. I, I've been here 70 years, and I love Oak Ridge, so. Okay. The only other thing I can think is, do you want to tell Cindy about shopping in Knoxville? Oh. And how some of the people treated you? Oh, they were, they were wonderful. People were really good. They were really nice. In Knoxville? And yes, they were. I yeah. thought you told me they didn't want to. They didn't want to serve the people from Oak Ridge. Well, they didn't. That's true. In the very <laughs> beginning, in the very beginning, they didn't. Because I remember I, one time I went in. I was looking for something, and she she kept waiting on everybody else, you know. And finally, I said, "Well, I I, I was here first. She said, "Just a second. She said, "I'll get to you when I get to you," and. So they weren't very, very nice in the beginning, but later on they were. Later on, I think they realized that, you know, Oak Ridge was coming in there to shop, and they, you should, they should have been nice to us, you know. But in the beginning, they weren't. I know I was, I was treated kind of rough a couple of times. And why is that? Well, I don't know. I, I think we look different coming in from Oak Ridge. Everything was mud here, you know. And I'm sure we had mud on our shoes, and maybe we didn't dress the way they did in Knoxville. I don't know. But there was some reason they they knew Oak Ridgers. The minute you came in, they knew you were from Oak Ridge. Okay. 